So addition and subtraction are inverses, right? Plus and minus. And then multiplication and division are also inverses. Powers and radicals, for instance, if we did something like uh, x cubed and the cube root of x are inverses. Well, exponential functions have inverses too. They are called logarithms. Uh, written like this, log base b of x. And just like how the exponential functions had a base, um, right, it would be the power of x, logarithmic functions also have a base. So um, it's important to know that uh, each base is specific to the inverse, just like how um, each power, right, x cubed and the cube root, x squared and the square root. The idea is the same, that the, the power on the radical changes depending on the power that you are taking the inverse of. Same thing happens for the base on the logarithm and base in the exponent. So the inverse of 2 to the power of x is log base 2. The inverse of 10 to the power of x, log base 10. And the inverse of e to the power of x, this is going to be log base e. It's, this, it's just the same base that you have. Log base 2 is this, this kind of um, graph. It is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Log base 10 looks like this. It's a little bit flatter. Um, th this went down from, from here. And uh, this portion went up a little bit. It's a little bit sharper there than this one is. And then log base e, e what was, was just about, what, what 2.72. So it's a little bit more than 2. It's going to be a little bit flatter than 2, but it's not as flat as 10. And the domain in range, well, the domain of all these things, um, this actually what's called asymptotes close to 0. It will never cross this um, uh, axis, the y-axis but it gets infinitely close to it. So the domain of this thing is going to be 0 to infinity. It does go off infinitely this way. The graph just keeps going. And the range, well, you can see that this definitely goes down to negative infinity. It, goes, it shoots down quite fast. Um, but up here, this is actually one of the slowest functions to grow. It, it looks like it almost just flat lines, but it does, in fact, go off to infinity. It just takes an incredibly long time to do it. The range is everything. Okay, um, base 10 and base e are used so frequently that we kind of get sick of writing log base 10 and log base e. There are shorthands for these. Log base 10, at least for, for the US, um, this is written as LOG. Just without a base written, LOG means log base 10. So log base 10 of x would just be log x. The shorthand for e, e, as I said before, e is such an important number. It's incredibly useful, used in many situations. Um, this is going to be written as the natural logarithm. Ln stands for natural logarithm because e is such a natural number for exponents um, that it becomes a natural logarithm. Okay, so for addition and subtraction, right, um, 1 plus 2 is 3. This is the exact same th thing as saying 3 minus 2 is 1. So I have our, our inverses there. If we do 5 times 7.2, this is the exact same thing, um, this being equal to 36. This is the same thing as 36 divided by 7.2. Again, just, just uh, a uh, operation and its inverse written in equivalent notation. 3 to the power of 4, right? Power of 4 here and a power uh, on the radical of 4. So um, if we have 6 to the power of 4 here, now re remember, this is, this is an exponent, right? 3 to the power of 4. This is an exponent here, 6 to the power of 4. But we're not doing the same operation. We're not taking the fourth root of both sides. We're actually moving the base over. The change of this one is going to be 4 equals log base 6 of 1296. That's what we're looking to move, is the base over, not the power. And here we have a log base 2.35. This thing is the same thing as 5.5225 equals 2.35 to the power of 2. Now, logarithms um, have similar properties. 
um, as exponents because they really come from each other. If uh, b to the power of zero, right, any, any power of zero means that you get one. That means that if I move this base over, I get zero equals log base b of one. So if you have one inside of a logarithm, it doesn't matter what base the logarithm is, you get zero as a result. If I move base over here, I get one equals log base b of b. So if you have the same base on the inside of the logarithm, let's do log base b, um, you get just one. The kind of, you can think of it like the b, the base b and the b cancel, and you get just one. Now, of course, these are inverses, um, not just like this, but also inverses, so that if we have um, b to the power of log base b of x, well, if you, if you think about it like this, right, if you have x plus 1 minus 1, well, what do you get? You get just x as a result. If you have uh, 2 times x divided by 2, you get x as a result. If you take um, uh, x cubed and then the cube root of x, or sorry, the cube root of that, you get x as a result. The same thing happens here b to the power of log base b, they cancel, and we get just x. Or log base b of b to the x, these cancel, and we get just x. This is actually the same thing as it's set up here, except now we had, a, we had a power on b, though, and that power just comes out on the outside as an x. So let's use these properties in solving some, some expressions that have logarithms. First one here, we have 10 to the power of log base 10, right? It's not written there. This is the same thing as 10 to the power of log base 10 of 32. But I just showed this, right? The bases are the same, so they actually cancel, and we get just 32. Okay, here we have log base 6 of the square root of 6. Well, what I can do is I can write this as log base 6 of 6 to the power of 1 half. Square root's the same thing as the power of 1 half. And now I have log base b of something, b to the power of something, right? Those cancel, and we're just left with the power, 1 half. Okay, so here in this last one, I don't have the same bases here. I have 8 and 4. However, these two things can be made into the same, well, I should say four can be made into the same base. And one way of doing that is by taking log base eight and setting that equal to something, so let's just say x, and rewriting it as four equals eight to the power of x. Here I can rewrite this as two squared and eight as two cubed. And now you can see I have 2 squared equals 2 to the 3x. The only way these are equal is if the powers are equal. Divide by 3. So x must be 2 thirds. What this means is that I can actually replace this thing with just 2 thirds because this was equal to x, right? So this is going to be the same thing as 6x, but x is 2 thirds. And those cancel giving me four. So this thing just evaluates out to four. And that's the key thing to, to keep in mind is that sometimes logarithms are easier to work with, not as a logarithm, but by changing this into the exponential form and then thinking about it as an exponent. Logarithms can be tricky to, to think about just because they're so kind of a different type of operation. All right, we have this, this longer expression. Let's simplify it. Um, 343, this is actually the same thing as, let's see, seven to the power of three. All right, log base seven to the seven to the power of three. Now this is log base 10, and so I can rewrite 0.01. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna explicitly write the base of 10 there. Uh, I can count over one, two spaces. This is the same thing as one over 100. And this is multiplying. Um, this one is probably gonna be easier to think of it as an exponent. So let's, let, let's take in a side of this one and think of it like that. This equals x, move the base over. 
4 root 3 to the power of x. So what we're looking at here is 4 root 3 to some power equals 48. Well, let's just expand this a little bit and see what we get. So let's just try multiplying by 2. So th this is 4 root 3 squared, right? 4 times 4 is 16. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And that gives me 48. So when I square it, I actually get 48. So really, x must equal 2. That's how this thing works out. So this is just equal to 2. And I can replace that with 2. Now, there are other ways of thinking about this. You could, of course, expand the expression out and try to work with factors of this thing out. This one ended up being a little bit, a little bit easier than that. But sometimes you have to play around with the expressions and just think about how can I get 48 from, in this case, 4 root 3. The natural log of 1, this is the property, the natural log, um, or, or sorry, any logarithm, any base, with 1 on the inside of it is equal to 0. Okay, this first one, the log base 7 and 7 cancel, we get just 3 here. And I want to have 10 on the inside here. Well, 1 over 100 is the same thing as 1 over 10 squared, which is the same thing as 10 to the negative 2 power. And that gives me a base of 10, which is what I want when we're dealing with these logarithms. So 10 to the negative 2. And once again, you can see that those are going to cancel. Plus 0 is just goes away. So we get 3 plus negative 2 times 2, 3 plus it's going to be minus 4, which gives me negative 1. So a little bit of thinking about how to work with logarithms. Um, once again, sometimes it's easier to think of the logarithms as an exponent and go from there. I could have done that with this log base uh, or log of 0 0.01. Think of this as equal to x. Then you get 0 0.01 equals 10 to the power of x. And then you can kind of go down this rabbit hole here. All right, give it a try in numbers 5 and 6. All right, here we have expressions, and expressions can be um, easy to solve when there's just a single term here. We're going to use just the uh, inverse operation to get the variable by itself. And now I can take 2 to the power of both sides. That's going to cancel the log base 2. So we get 9k equals 2 to the power of negative 2. That's the same thing as 1 over 4. Right? 2 to the power of negative is going to be flipping it, 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared, just 4. Now I can divide by 9. That's going to give me 1 over 36. So you can just plug that into there. You can see um, 1 over 36 is going to be 1 over 4. Um, 1 over 4 is the same thing as 2 to the negative 2 power. Log base 2 of 2 is negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. It works out. Okay, the next one, let's subtract 5. Then divide by 7. This gets the e um, with some power by itself. That's going to be some nasty number, so I'm just going to leave it like that for a moment. And to get rid of the e and to get the power by itself, I need to take the natural logarithm. That's going to cancel with the e. So by taking the natural log of both sides, I can actually stop here because here I have a natural log of a negative number. And that is not allowed. There's going to be no solution to this, to this problem. But I want to keep going to show you the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the problem slightly. I'm going to change this to be negative 7 here. What that does is it now changes this to negative 7, which means we divide it by negative 7, and that makes this positive. And that we can do. So let's keep going from this point here and seeing what we get. The natural log of 94 over 7 equals now 3 in minus 5. I can add 5, and then I'm going to divide by 3 after that. So we get natural log of 94 over 7 plus 5 over 3 equals n. Plugging that into a calculator, that's going to give me 
some decimal number, 5.23 approximately. Um, so it's important to note that there are restrictions you have to keep in mind, right? Natural logs cannot have negative numbers in them or zero in it. So I keep that in mind when you're working with it because you might just have no solution. Give it a try in number seven and eight. Now, uh, logarithms are useful in a lot of such scenarios. One of the nicest things about them is using a logarithmic scale. And if we have a large, large, you know, as a super large set of numbers, so like one to, this would be what, a thousand million, billion, trillion, one trillion, that's such a large scale. However, our number system is base 10. And if we look instead at log base x, so log base 10 of x, right? Then log base one, or sorry, log, log base 10 of one is zero. Log of 10 would be one, since 10 to the power right, this is gonna be log base 10 of 10, that gives you one. This is 10 squared, so log base 10 of 10 squared cancels, you get two there. Um, 1,000 goes to three. And then here, really all we have to do is count the zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That means it's gonna be 10 to the power of 12 gives us just 12. So this extremely uh, large set of numbers gets compressed down to just being between zero and 12. That, that's what a logarithmic scale does, is it, is it compresses the things down to where we're not looking at the numbers, but looking at magnitude and how big the numbers are. And so uh, it's important to know when, when a scale is logarithmic and when it is uh, a normal scale or some other kind of scale, because you're gonna think about the numbers differently. A jump from four to five in a logarithmic scale is not just a single number jump, it's actually a power of 10 larger. So 10 to the, 10 to the four is 10,000, 10 to the five is 100,000. It's 10 times as big because we're using a log base 10 scale. 8 to 10 wouldn't be a jump of 2, but 10 to the power of 2, so 100 times as big. That's how you need to think about a logarithmic scale. Now, intensity levels um, of two earthquakes are measured on a seismograph using this formula. This is a log base 10 um, with the intensities divided, and that gives you the magnitude. The magnitudes are what, what are read by the Richter scale. So the magnitude of an earthquake isn't the intensity, isn't like the, um, the uh, energy of the earthquake or anything. It's just a, a measurement of the magnitude, the size, the power of the earthquake, as just like I showed up here, where it's not uh, a flat face value, but the magnitude. Magnitude really being the power on the value. Okay, in 2009, an earthquake of magnitude 6.1 hit Honshu, Japan. In 2011, a much more devastating earthquake hit with a magnitude of 9, 9.0. The question is, how many times greater was the intensity of the 2011 earthquake? Well, uh, here we have a log base, um, log base 10. Um, our intensity um, one is gonna be, let's do the first one. So this is gonna be, uh, 6.1 is gonna be M1. So the intensity one is going to be compared to this one. And then 9.0 is going to be M2. And our intensity two is going to be compared to that one. They're, they're, that's how they correspond to each other. So intensity one over intensity two equals uh, M1 is 6.1. M2 is 9.0. That, of course, gives us uh, negative 2.9. And now we can get rid of the logarithm by taking the power of 10 on both sides. So those cancel, we get I1 over I2 equals 10 to the power of negative 2.9. And I wanna know how does uh, intensity one compare, sorry, um, how does intensity two compare to intensity one? Since intensity two was a 9.0 earthquake, this should be much larger. And I can do that by getting um, intensity two by itself. 
I'm going to multiply both sides by intensity 2. And really, this is the same thing as not, as not uh, timesing it, but dividing by 10 to the 2.9 because the, the negative exponent puts it in the in the um, denominator. Now I can multiply by 2.9, and that gives me intensity to the second earthquake, the magnitude 9.0 earthquake, is 10 to the 2.9 times as big as intensity 1. That is, let's do that on the calculator, 10 to the power of 2.9, Intensity 2 was 794 approximately times as big, times as powerful, times as devastating as the first in, uh, earthquake. It's a much, much larger, much more powerful earthquake. Um, and that's the importance of a logarithmic scale, knowing when you're talking about logarithmic scale.